over at the community. So whatever we need to do as far as maintenance issues is going to continue with or without this meeting. But the letter clearly said that the intent of the meeting is for uh, everyone to talk about their part and what they're doing. If we're here, we can't do that. And I can't go back to the company and say, you know, look, let's try to work uh, for a relationship of trust moving forward uh, when the township is going to continue to have a meeting without us, without us being able to participate. Um, we're still confused whether it's official or not official, whether, you know, the language last Saturday or the other Saturday was uh, from, from somebody that was at that meeting was that, you know, I'm a, a, a resident of the community who happens to be a supervisor. That person's not here. But, you know, so it, it, it's really confusing. I think that it would be in the best interest in the long term because I think you're going to see these things happen over and over again. Look, you know, a light bulb goes out and an elect official gets, gets called. It, sometimes it's that. That, that bad. And I think that if we could have this time to have this conversation, you know, people have been met with who are saying things that aren't necessarily true uh, w without a public forum. I understand. So what I'm asking for is not and we anything different that's been granted to other people. No, well, we understand. Mm -hmm. um, but unfortunately, we have, to, we have to be mindful of our residents first. And I realize that you got late notice, but the meeting was thrown together quickly. And I'm not going to, we're not going to be able to reach all the 500 plus um, homes over there between now and Thursday to cancel the meeting. It's been duly advertised. Um, like I said, there's not going to be any action taken at this meeting. So we will we'll keep you, uh, we'll fully advise you as to what happened. We do have the capacity ourselves to help you reach our residents in that time. We could have it done first thing in the morning. We, we often distribute um, notices, so I, I don't think it's going to be a problem for me to get that notice out, uh, oh, you know, as early as possible tomorrow uh, to let them know, you know we're working with the township. Again, th look, bottom line is I'm not trying to stall. We've, I'm, we're really serious about trying to do the right thing to move forward in the right way. Um, the maintenance issues are going to continue with or without this meeting, whether we ever give input or not. We're, we're going to have to do what we have to do and do it the right way. But I think the relationship is extremely important, and that's why we want to do it the right way. We're asking you to reconsider that. So if we help distribute that message, would you consider? And I, again, right after Thanksgiving, I, it's just a scheduling thing. I, I do need to be here. I know Peter is going to have to be here. He's in Harrisburg, I believe. Um, I have no, I mean, yeah. I think it's important if you can reach to have everybody, management there. If you can reach everybody, then I, I'm, I'm okay with it. Can we pick a date that, so that in the, they know when the next, that why it's canceled and pick an, another date? So that is, we can is that something that we could decide here? Should we talk first thing in the morning? Uh, I, I know first week of December, I back up in Reading on the 7th, but... First, I'm eight. not prepared to pick a date okay. right now. Um, I, I don't think any of us are prepared to pick a date right now. May I propose this? I'll, uh, I'll be on the phone uh, early with you tomorrow to confirm that, yes, we get this letter distributed, and maybe if we need to follow, and, and find out what date works for you, or would you prefer us to say that, you know, a date is pending um, and that we'll re-notify them again probably within a day or two? Yeah. What works that, best? That's probably the best thing to do. Let okay. them know that the, it's, it's postponed for tomorrow because management wants to attend and that a, a date will be, um, they'll, they'll know within a day or two when the new schedule date is. I would think that the letter you distribute ought to be signed by the township manager so that the residents aren't calling here and asking if this is another, you know, management thing that <coughs> so the township manager should sign the letter so that That's good. people yeah. understand mm -hmm. that it's coming from here and not because you're trying to keep people away. So, Okay. And for the record, right. um, even though there may or may not be an official record on this issue, but um, I'm, we very much welcome your participation. This, is, um, this community and the problems over there is not new to us. Um, we've dealt with them. We dealt with them same issues last year, and personally, I was involved with them for three or four years before that. So, um, I'm glad to see that you're going to be here and you fully um, intend to perform in this uh, discussion. So, yeah, thank you and appreciate the opportunity. Thank you very much for this okay. consideration. Uh, so, Ms. Mason, I'll be in touch with you in the morning. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments, Joe? Walk faster, Joe. <laughs> oh, you're young.
I can actually start reading his stuff. <clears throat> a couple weeks ago, uh, Joe Pat and I stole, uh, Hulk wrote, uh, a couple weeks ago we had an interesting snowstorm which turned the heat off for about 3 million people. A lot of you don't re re realize it, but in my neighborhood, not only did we lose power, but just before we were losing it, we had a rather significant power surge. In my house, I saw a spark that looked like it was about six feet long, when it was only actually six inches, but it threw me for a loop. The surge was so large in our neighborhood that it burned out some of the electrical meters, uh, which is rather significant. We have several elderly people in our neighborhood, and they had nowhere to go for over 40 hours. Now, as I see it, dogs have a place to go, but not people. Yesterday in the papers, it seemed that the Red Cross no longer supports the center in Bristol. I guess we can't count on them either. Why can't the township do something in emergencies of this type in order to perform, per, provide some comfort? Maybe you could get together with the borough, the YMCA, the Dawlstown Hospital to provide a temporary space for, like, the building in the back. The hospital has temporary space in that I was over at their old emergency room and none of it is being used. The way I see it, if we can give space to dogs, we can certainly help the elderly a little bit more. Second point, next month you will be voting on the budget. I don't know at this point if the budget includes new taxes and or cuts, but I would like to say the following. If the township residents give their, if some of the township residents give their ideas on how to save whatever, $100 to $100,000, we, we may be able to save a large sum of money. And in order to start the ball rolling, may I suggest you lay two township employees off. This would save about $75,000. Now, you probably won't do this since you will lose votes or you will feel bad, and hopefully it's the latter. So rather than do this, and since we're having three new, so to speak, three new board members coming on board, why don't you drop the $75,000 in insurance premiums that the board now gets? Most of you have your own companies or are professionals. Besides, isn't it true that volunteers do what they do to help people and are not in it for any rewards or perks? Thank you. Anybody else? Any other comments, sir? Good evening, Supervisors, Ms. Mason, uh, David Bauer, Lower State Road. Um, in the last few weeks, I've received several mailers prior to the election, both parties uh, focusing on the 41% tax increase. Last December, you had a few residents come before this board whining and salivating for a 41% tax increase. One of those residents said, and I will quote her, I'm fairly confident the employees have done their part to help this situation. I'm fairly confident that the supervisors have done their part to help this situation. The only segment of the community that hasn't been asked to help is the residents. What an insult to the taxpayers who are footing the bill for PPO family coverage at over $20,000 a year for one employee. And I'll tell you what PPO stands for. Pass payment on to taxpayers. I have a problem with and object to my taxes paying for non-employee health care. I am being told that two employees performing the same job I'm to pay more for the employee with dependent care. So I suggest that maybe you could grandfather existing employees with health care and new hires pay for dependent coverage. And you'll be amazed at how many of the new hires will flock to an HMO and not a PPO. I'd be curious if the board would have any comments on my remarks. Oh, I have none. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. 
Uh, next item is the presentations from the Friends of the Doylestown Dog Park. I'm Kathy Brown. I'm co-chair of the Friends of the Doylestown Dog Park. And I have to say I'm here with some, some um, what we feel is very positive news, very good news. And um, I am starting with this slide um, showing you these are our goals. This is our third visit here. We have had these goals um, since we started our um, venture to build this dog park almost three years ago. And I'm proud to say that of these goals, we have reached every one of them except to build or to establish the dog park. So in saying that, we are requesting approval to move forward to build the dog park. Now, I am going to demonstrate um, or show you the updates that we have done since our March presentation and how and what we have done to reach the goals and to um, show you that we are prepared to build the dog park. In the design, it's basically the same design as before. We have just changed the pavilion a little bit change the fence a little bit. Um, the pavilion is now a hexagon, and we've moved the fence out to make the pavilion area um, a nicer area for events, fundraising events, things like that. That's the old one. This is the new one. So it basically looks the same, um, just a little difference in the pavilion and the size of the fencing. We're going to skip that. This is a closer look of the pavilion, and you can see, well, it's kind of hard to see, but you can see the, um, there's space for some landscaping, the fencing, um, the shape of the pavilion. So those are changes from before. And this, um, Judy Hendrickson, again, donated her talents to give us a visual of the dog park. Now, one of the goals, one of our um, major accomplishments is that we have reached our budget goal. Um, in that, in our design, we initially presented to you that we would build in three phases. As we worked on the design, we found that, that we needed to put components in phase three in phase one. And the good thing about this is as our design changed, our fundraising increased. And I have to say our fundraising was extremely successful, extremely ex successful. And in saying that, that demonstrates the community support and the desire, and the, the, um, the desire of the community to have this facility. Um, it's hard to see that is our updated budget. Um, you should have a copy of it in your business plan. The bottom line of that is that we have reached our fundraising goal, and we have the money to pay for what we need to pay for to build the dog park. We also have, and again, you're going to hear me say it lots of times, it's the community support. Um, we have over $76,000 in donations, in in-kind donations, to build this park. The other part of it is cash on hand. So we have reached that goal. We have actually exceeded that goal. But in saying that, that doesn't mean by any means that our fundraising stops and we don't need more money as we move on. So our fundraising will continue. Uh, we had a very successful brick campaign. Um, to date, we have sold, I believe, 75 bricks and five pavers. Um, we will continue that. 
We will also expand that a little bit in where we have been advertising this, promoting this as buy a brick, build the dog park. We're moving to memory bricks and bricks to honor as opposed to, I mean, since we've already been hopefully going to have the park built, we will add to um, honor dogs or people in the community. Our in-kind donations, once the park is built, if we want to improve, we will continue to ask for in-kind donations first, and then if that doesn't work, we will go with our naming and dog park partners. Again, we have raised over $100,000 in the dog park partners program. Very successful fundraising, and we anticipate that that will continue. And we will also, our events, people look forward to our events, and we will continue at least two annual fundraising events. In this, we will be raising money to improve the park and also make sure that the um, maintenance fund is there. But we also have other ways to ensure that as well. Future plans and support. This is important to me. I, I want not only the Board of Supervisors, but I want the public to understand why we did the registration the way we did and our orientation and our access. Safety is the utmost concern. And in registration, we're requiring um, medical records for the dog and ownership information. Once someone registers and pays a registration fee, and that registration fee will go to the maintenance and operating fund for the dog park. So once that is paid, they will sign up for an orientation class. And that is something that's different from other dog parks. And we're doing this in a proactive way in that we will have professional dog trainers facilitate the orientation. And we will explain and make sure people understand what is expected of them before they and their dog ever enter the dog park. So what we're doing here is explaining proper etiquette for the, the human as well as the dog. Um, we are also going over good dog behavior and bad dog behavior. So what we're doing here is hoping that the, um, the registrants will understand and take ownership of the park. And in doing so, we will minimize the, um, the problems and maximize the enjoyment. Now, once the orientation is completed, uh, the registrants will get an access key fob. So the only way to enter the park is with the key fob. Now, dog park management. It is and has always been the Friends of the Doylestown Dog Park's plan to raise all the funds needed to build this park, maintain this park. And once that is done, dedicate the park to the Doylestown Township. In doing that, we will have a, our $10,000 escrowed maintenance fund all the registration fees go to replenish this maintenance fund, and the township will operate and maintain the dog park just like any other park in the park system. All right? That's our plan. Now, one of the new things in an update is an advisory board, and we want to do this um, to help with the oversight and the insight or the, for the future of the dog park. And it will be borough and township residents, members from the Friends of the Doylestown Dog Park, the, someone from the township staff, and a um, board of supervisors liaison. The advisory board will work with, and, and this is what we propose, the advisory board will work with the park and recreation, with the board of supervisors, and with the Friends of the Doylestown Dog Park. Ultimately, the Friends of the Doylestown Dog Park will continue working with the township, but will raise funds for the maintenance and the improvement of the park. We will also work when needed to improve the park. 
Um, so the Friends of the Doylestown Dog Park will still be involved, but the township will have the um, operation and maintenance of the park. Um, I want to say that we are very proud of our efforts and we've worked hard, but it's been very, very rewarding to be a part of something that is so community-based. And in these times, um, I am very proud to say that we have done what we've needed to do and we have the funds needed to build this park. We, we've done our part and we're asking the Board of Supervisors to let us move on and build the park. <laughs> Thanks, Kathy. Um, and thank you, committee. You guys indeed did what you said you were going to do. You've done a great job. And um, let me just say, behind the scenes, and a lot of this stuff gets done behind the scenes, we um, worked with, the, uh, with your representatives, with Kathy Brown. Kathy worked with um, Karen Sweeney, our Park and Rec Director, um, Dick John, Stephanie Mason, myself. Um, the solicitor and I worked on the agreement. It's a, in a draft form. All the supervisors have a copy of this agreement, which would be the operation agreement between the Friends of Dog Park and Dolestown Township. It lays out the responsibilities of the Dog Park, Friends of Dog Park, <coughs> and um, Dolestown Township. Dolestown Township will have oversight. We are the municipality in which the dog park is situated, and we are responsible. It is part of our park land subject to, of course, the lease with the, with the county. So um, we're fiscally responsible. We're, we're liably responsible, and um, it is our maintenance um, department that is going to be in charge of it. The fees that are going to be collected, membership fees, there's some details that have to work, be worked out about that, um, charging residents, non-residents, who are residents, who aren't non who are not residents, um, Kathy, just to amend one thing Kathy did say is that the fees collected will go for the maintenance and all the costs associated with it, including administration and financial and operation costs. But all the fee if whatever fees are not going for those costs will be um, separated out for improvement costs for the dog park in accordance with the advisory board's recommendation. Now, the advisory board, as Kathy said, is going to be made up of um, – Representatives from the dog park and from Dostown Township and a liaison supervisor and our staff. Um, this uh, this this will have this this group of folks will be having a, uh, an advisory capacity. They will be looking to see what changes need to be made, what improvements um, need to be made, where there are any glitches in the system, and make recommendations to who's ever in charge. Typically, typically us, maybe just um, the director or the operations manager. So, um, it you know the that bit of business is very important. You've got to build it, but then you've got to operate it and have an understanding as to how that all, all is, it gets done. Um, you guys worked very well in making that happen, and um, this is just a draft, this uh, agreement. Um, there's, Like I said, it needs to be worked on, and um, this is your operating agreement and your presentation. I think it's very well done, and I would make the motion that um, we give the Friends of Dog Park to go ahead. Second. I would, I would just like to say I commend your group for doing everything we've asked of you to do. Thank you. Not put any burden on our taxpayers. You raised all the funds yourself to provide this, the maintenance, the insurance, the whole nine yards. And I think this was a great – I read this thing entirely and was very impressed with Thank what you. you have accomplished. And Thank I certainly you. support this wholeheartedly. Good. I see some comments, questions, hands. Mr. O'Malley, do you want to come down? O'Malley, Rogers Road. Come up to the spike mic, please, so our viewing public can hear you appropriately. Being a dog owner for most of my life, we know that some dogs can be more aggressive than others. Who's going to suffer any liability should one dog attack another and, and a dog owner goes to pull the dog off the other dog and bites uh, a dog owner, and then we have this thing that just keeps going on. Who, who's going to suffer any liability? You want to speak to that, Ms. Brown? Oh, I can't. One of, the, um, one of the things we have addressed in the registration is when a registrant signs up, one of the things they sign is they uh, release, and tell me if I'm using the wrong term, but release of li liability. So when you enter the dog park, you're entering it at your own risk. Just like if you go onto a soccer field, you're playing 
at your own risk. In addition, the township's insurance will provide coverage, but the incremental cost for that insurance will come out of the fund. So there's an economic no effect on the township for the additional insurance. Anybody else? You can use that mic. Oh, you're headed there. Thank you. Who absorbs the cost in case they don't raise the money in two years or three years for maintenance or four years? Who's going to pay? Does the park come apart? Or is the township absorbing that maintenance? It's a good question. I guess there's always the risk that the dog park will go defunct, but we've been assured that there are people lining up for registrations and that this is a great need for the community and there will always be people using this dog park and there will always be registration fees sufficient to pay for the cost of operation. Well, that's one of the reasons they have the fund, which they have to build up for the maintenance. How big are they going to build it? How much is going to be the basis to start off with? How big? Yeah, what's the basic amount that you need to maintain and operate this park? For the first year, they're going to be, we're going to establish a fund at $10,000 and then quarterly after that we're going to look at the amount that's going to require for maintenance and increase it up or down depending on. Is registration once a year, every year? Annual registration. How much are you charging? It's not a definitive amount, but we're looking at $40 a year. And we anticipate minimal number of registrants to be 500. Annually? Annually. Other local dog parks, when they opened, they had to close their registration at 800. So if you do the math right there, we will have a substantial maintenance fund to keep this going. And that will continue annually? Yes. Fill up that pot? Yes. Yes. Any other questions? Any questions from the board? Calling the question on the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Four no. Thank you. Rarely do we get applause, so thank you very much. Back to the, wait, we have one more presentation on the agenda. Mr. O'Malley? I wouldn't. Don't touch anything. You can close the lid. More of a critique than a presentation. On October 24th, the Planning Commission held an open meeting regarding the York Swamp Rogers Road development and held it at Lenape. Many of, well, several of board members, representatives, staff members were not in attendance. So I thought I'd take the time to give you the resident's spin on what transpired. To call the meeting a dog and pony show would be grossly overstated. Close to 100 residents were in attendance. The township, through its township manager, had advised the residents that the reviews were in and ready for disclosure to the public. The residents were ready and prepared, even though we received only four days' notice. Everyone was not as prepared as the residents. The applicant had his allotted 60 days plus. The township, who knows how much time they had to do the reviews. But to us, everyone had adequate time, both the applicant and the township, but they were poorly prepared. The applicant did not have his traffic engineer present and not in attendance from the township were the chair to the planning commission, the township engineer, and the traffic engineers. The residents wanted to know about stormwater management, woodlands, buffers, the cell phone tower, and traffic management. All we got were bits and pieces. Even the planner, 
who was running the meeting, more or less, admitted that she was not qualified to answer many of the residents' questions. How do we let important staff members not be in attendance during critical issues like the Grasso Project? This has been an ongoing thing. Should they not be compelled to attend meetings like this? Taxpayers spend huge tax dollars for these people to render opinions at meetings like this. In the future, I suggest that if they don't attend, that the township back charge the firms they work for. But this should not be surprising, as in my opinion, this township and some of its staff are guilty of a pattern of bad behavior. During this entire Grasso soap opera, the residents have had to suffer through being told no meetings were being held between the applicant and the township, when indeed at a later date the township admitted to such meetings. Mr. Garton, after Mrs. Lyons asked that Rogers Road residents be represented at discussions between the township and applicants, stated all discussions would be held in the township building here. This also was a false statement. The applicant admitted to having 10 months of meetings with staff members. This even after Mrs. Lyons stated there would be no discussions with the applicant while litigation was going on. During the last meeting, Mrs. Board, Board of Supervisors meeting, Mrs. Mason stated twice no, meetings, no recent meetings had taken place between the applicant and the township. But the applicant at the Lenape meeting admitted along with the township planner that recent meetings indeed had taken place. Who is minding the store here? How many non-truths truths do we have to listen to? How much frustration should a neighborhood have to endure? Additional bad behavior, and with no respect to anyone's religious affiliation. When Temple Judea was seeking township approval for its facility, the congregants filled the rooms here and at Lenape. In, the, in their new facility, they would, will have a nursery school, daycare, and a religious school, and all that goes with the house of worship. If Mr. Grasso, if approved, will put traffic, additional traffic on Rogers Road, traffic that includes a variety of trucks, if anyone has traveled Rogers Road, you know the poor sight lines and the narrowness of the road, this causing a serious and dangerous situation. <clears throat> With that, wouldn't you think that in the best interest of its congregants and children that the temple would have had representation at the Grasso meeting? Wouldn't you think safety of the congregants would have been paramount? Yet there were no representation. I find that suspect. As stated previously, very little in concrete information was presented at the Lenape meeting. But how would have the temple had known that? Not attending was not because of being not interested. It was because someone in the building here made the temple aware that the meeting was not relative to them. Or has a deal already been struck between the township the developer, and the temple regarding the traffic light. Now tell, tell me, the applicant got his process, his due process, using his allotted time. The township did their reviews in adequate time to rebut. And the temple was afforded inside information, but the residents were only granted four days and denied an extension, an extension that the developer told me he would be more than happy to extend. All he needed was to be asked. I, ca I call this bias and discriminatory against the people who this garbage affects the most, the residents. The bias and the lies have to stop. I'm a traffic guy. I'm here fighting for the safety, health, and welfare of my people and the people who drive through our neighborhood. Last week, Doylestown Township Police 
presented this traffic study to the traffic advisory committee that I'm a member of. And astonishingly, though Rogers Road is not one of the most heavily traveled roads in the community, it is one of the most dangerous. And the board cannot ignore this any longer. You ignored it during the uh, Temple Judea uh, process, and it can't be ignored anymore. I presented my opinions to the Central Buff School Board. I intend presenting my concerns to them at their next meeting. Children's safety is a real concern. Buses and trucks and SUVs are unable to navigate the head of that road. And someone has to stand up and realize that. Thank you. Any other public comment? Moving on to the regular agenda. Hello, Ellen Ekman uh, from Colonial Heritage. Uh, We were watching and we saw that you postponed our meeting. And that's going to be a problem for residents. Many people took off. Uh, We have people from uh, New Britain Borough coming. And it would be hard for us to get a hold of all of them. Plus, we have New Britain Township coming. I think it was very unfair to allow uh, Mr. Kilpatrick to manipulate and change our meeting. And I would like that changed back to when it's supposed to be. Um, it's not that wouldn't be for the residents that would be for the company they've had eight years to deal with this and I don't think four more days or whatever is going to make much difference yeah we 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 were surprised at the four days too but we dealt with it and I'm sure they can and I just think it's this is wasn't for the residents I was home thinking what are you doing what are you doing to us well, it is for the residents because if we're going to try and get some resolution and get all this, all these issues out, it's best that they be there. Now they couldn't be there. You you heard the conversation, and um, they they took the uh, responsibility of notifying everybody. So that's what they're going to do. Yeah, but we have more people coming than they can. They are going to notify just our community. Well, they're going to have to notify everybody. They're going to have to notify everybody in New Britain Township and New Britain Borough, too. And you can help notify them as well. I, we didn't send notice to New Britain Borough, New Britain Township. Yeah, New, I know New Britain Borough was included. New Britain okay. Township and, and their resident And their representatives will be coming. So I'm sure that since... You, you I mean, everything was in place. I just I know, don't Zachary. understand why. I know. I know. Uh, and I think uh, I would just like to go with it because there's wells possibly being contaminated, and we'd like to see this issue looked into. I mean, we have people coming that can tell people that their wells have been contaminated because of our oil issues. And I think that's more important. I think it's best that we get the facts. Um, I I don't know who's telling you these things, but I think we need to get the facts, and I want to hear them from the people who are taking the samples. And um, and we we want the owners and representatives there to hear as well. So let's, let's do it when everyone can be in the same room. Let's get all the facts out with everybody who's there to listen and, and address them. And um, I, unfortunately, for whatever reason, they can't be here, but they, they took the responsibility of notifying everybody, and I think it might be in the end, and I think the board agrees with me, a more productive meeting if we can all be in the same room. Okay. Thank you. I'm sorry that it's going to be an inconvenience. It's going to be. Sir? Good evening. I'm Gerald Wall. I'm president of Temple Judea. I just wanted to state uh, for the record that the way I find out about these planning commission meetings is the office emails me a copy of the letter that's sent to our office. So we find out at the same time we have the same interests as all the other residents of the township. Our, the safety of our children is paramount and all our congregants, and we look forward to serving the community. Um, but uh, there is no insider information that comes my way, and you know I'm usually the go-to person, you know, from the uh, leadership side for our temple. So thank you. Thank you. Okay, next meeting of this board is uh, Tuesday, December sixth. Uh, we're gonna um, um, we cancel the meeting of the Colonial Heritage for December seventeenth. Mm-hmm. New date to follow. We're going to be closed on Thursday, December twenty-fourth, and Friday, December twenty-fifth for Thanksgiving. Yard and leaf swaths. <laughs> 
Leaf and yard waste recycling is December 10th at Central Park. Doylestown residents only, township residents only. And the Doylestown food pantry is in desperate need of uh, supplies, food. We, we made a copy of donations for the Doylestown food pantry. Please pick one up on the, uh, on the table. The unique thing about this donation is that if you've got um, lab equipment, stereos, laptops, la laptop batteries, microwave ovens, all kinds of computer equipment that you've been trying to get rid of, those old Atari games and so on, you can deliver them to um, AB8 Waste Solutions. They will take them. They will uh, take any money that they get for the recycling of those and donate it to the Doylestown Food Pantry. The deadline for this is, um, unfortunately, it's just this Friday, November 18th. Uh, we are going to be taking some collections here, so if you want to drop off stuff here by noon on Friday, we will make sure it gets to the place so we can get some uh, credit to Dolestown Food Pantry. And like I said, they're in desperate need. Um, please help out whatever way you can. Uh, the minutes for uh, approval of the budget work session on November 4th. There's a motion. Move for approval. Any questions, concerns? All in favor? Just page, page three. Uh. Okay. Sorry. Page three. Ms. Lyons commented that certainly cutting into the moral of the employees is a concern. It's morale. Anything else? Nope. All in favor? All right. Abstain. I was not available. Um, work session meeting minutes for October 21st. October 21st. October 21st. Where are they? Vote for approval. Mm -hmm. yeah, Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Work session meeting, I mean, uh, sorry. Regular meeting. Regular meeting of Doylestown, uh, Doylestown Township Board of Supervisors, October 18th. Move for approval. Is there a second? second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Three and one abstention. Um, we have to pass on the road inspection minutes for October 6th. We don't have, um, by the way, to correct the record, the vote for that road inspection, the last meeting was <coughs> illegal. Um, and we can't vote on it tonight because we're not a quorum on the vote. Reports from the solicitor. I think the report won't discuss later in the agenda. Lieutenant? Nothing to report. Thank you. Township engineer? Nothing at this time. Manager? Nothing at this time. Um, don't, I'm not going to update Colonial Heritage. Um, Cynthia, do you have anything? Um, no. Congratulations to the dog park. Thank you. Uh, Rick? Uh, just comment that we talk about volunteers. There's openings on just about every board and commission. And all year long we solicit for volunteers. So if anyone out there wants to um, um, donate some of their time, it's, it's a great, great uh, opportunity to uh, uh, help out in the community. Just contact um, Stephanie and uh, we'll get you on board commission that you like. There will be interviews for such boards and commissions. We'll be ho holding them in January, not before. Tom? Yeah, well, I just want to say uh, I want to thank our road crew for doing a great job during these several big storms that we've had in the past uh, month or so. And uh, as we always do, we have an exceptional group of people who work uh, tirelessly over time, et cetera, et cetera, to make sure that our roads are maintained safely for our residents to run on. And uh, uh, just want to thank them again. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. All right. Um, next item on the agenda is a public hearing of the proposed ordinance for the outdoor furnaces. Yes, this was put together, and the hearing is actually going to be on the 6th. It was um, advertised today. But the last time the board talked about it was July, and Judy can't be here on the 6th, so I thought she could give you just a real brief overview of the proposed ordinance um, so that when you have the hearing, you can um, be better informed on it. So the hearing will not be on the 6th? It, you no, know, it's scheduled for the 6th right now. But Judy won't be able to be here then, so I thought we can do that. Okay. Well, we don't have to have it on the 6th. No, you can make, if you decide on that or a later time, you can table it. Rather you be here. Okay. Why don't we just table it then? Do you want to table it? Yes. Want, okay. Do we you want to move it to the 20th? the 20th? Can you make the what 20th? Date, what date are you available? I believe the 20th, so let me just double check. I didn't know that one off the top of my head. Okay. Very good. Thank you. All right. So there's a motion to table. Yes. All in agreement. Yes. All right. Thanks for coming. Oh, okay. 
All right. The next item on the agenda is um, presentation of the budget with first the um, approval of the 20, uh, 2011 revised budget. Yes. That's been provided for us in our mm -hmm. packet. Yes. Se 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 was mm -hmm. 2011 budget with 10.25 mills, um, revenues of $10,417,453, expenses of $10,277,394, and fund balance of $4,455,666,000. Um, That's $4,454,455. Right. $4,455,666. Put another one revised. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We found another dollar. Oh, there's another dollar. <laughs> this is updated is. as of this afternoon from our finance department. Mm -hmm. Is there a motion to approve I'll, the revised? I'll make budget? a motion. We approve the. the I guess with the hang it. No, this is for the revised. This is okay, revised. Okay, right. revised budget. I'll make a motion, and I have to make a. This is without any tax increase to the residents of Doylestown Township. This Tom, Tom, no, no, Tom, this is last year's budget. Well, I mean, the one you voted against. What we're going, what we're going for here. What we're, what we're approving here right now is yes. the, the revised budget for 2011. Yes, that's Next correct. Next item on the agenda is the approval of the preliminary budget for 2012. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, second. is there a second for the approval of the revised budget? Second. Sure. Questions, comments. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Next item on the agenda is um, a motion to approve preliminarily the budget prepared for 2012. That's correct. Um, I make a motion we approve that. Is there a second for discussion purposes? I'll second. All right, Stephanie. Thank you. Um, the 2012 budget has been prepared with no tax increase. Millage will remain at 10.25. Revenues will be $10,843,029. Expenses, $10,683,592. With a fund balance of $3,876,781. Again, some of the highlights from the budget include no real estate tax increase for 2012, no staff or service cuts. The township selected a pension smoothing option for the MMO of 2012. Um, we're offset that by state aid um, at $226,439. A zero wage increase is incorporated into the budget for non-uniform. We have left something there for the police in case our arbitration, which was unknown at this time, comes back. Um, there will be um, a reduction in the medical plan costs, saving township $65,000. Um, employee contributions will continue to the pension at 5% and contributions to medical at 1%. Reallocation of the millage from the debt service, 1.25 mills has been moved from the general fund. Total debt service for 2012 is $706,970. Debt service millage rate is 0.75 um, in 2011 to two, in two mills in 2012. Capital expenditures to be paid with existing reserves, loan balances, and transfers from the general fund. Total expenditures for 2012 is $877,603, down from 2011 budgeted figures of 1.3. Obviously, implications for beyond 2012, we will need to continue to look at our capital expenditures, funding for 2013 and 14, and examine the tax millage allocations each year. I would add this is a preliminary budget only, so that's advertised and available for public review, and the board will be adopting a final budget before the end of the calendar year, but they cannot change the preliminary budget by more than 25 percent in the aggregate or 10 percent in any major line item. So there are restrictions, but this is not the final budget, so that there may be other tweaking that may occur. Okay. Well, I'll make a motion we approve. This is what we call hanging the budget. Am I correct? Yeah. Correct. I was ahead of myself uh, from 2011 to 2012 when I spoke last time, and I apologize, but uh, uh, I think this is a very doable budget we're presenting at this time. Question, please. Yeah, please, right there. Can you please repeat the revenue and the expense number that you supported on your budget? Mm -hmm. $10,843,029. That was? All funds. 
That's revenue. That's revenue. And okay. and expenses of ten million six hundred eighty three thousand five ninety two. It's substantially higher revenue than the last illustration I had two days ago. Ken gave me this the this morning, so. All right. There's a motion and a second. Uh, I'll second. It. Okay. As well. Okay. All in favor of hanging the budget? I have some discussion before we do that. Um, I will withdrawing vote. Withdrawing the question. Go I'm ahead. Sorry. Um, I will. I will vote to hang the budget, um, but only on one condition. Um, I just think it's a disgrace that the the township, we as supervisors, are not going to give our employees some type of a cost of living. Um, as we heard Tom talk about our road crew, uh, and he said that they are an exceptional group of people who do exceptional work. Um, they go above and beyond their call of duty for different things, and he wants to thank them uh, for all that they do. Um, you know, having zero percent in there is just rude as far as I'm concerned. I mean, in, in this day and age, there are a lot of people will complain to you that everybody should be doing something for nothing. Um, and if you, I don't agree with that. And I think it's absolutely wrong. If, and if you believe that the services that we get here in the township are good services, if, if you like, you know, the, the staff that's in here in the office that does something good for you, um, that helps you with a question, or if the, the road crew comes out and takes care of something, or the fact that maybe you've never even seen any of the staff or the road crew, but you know that that tree has been moved when we have a storm or your roads are plowed. Um, you know, the, the police, we put uh, a percentage in there for the police contract of having some type of a, an increase, but nothing for the non-uniformed employees. Uh, I, don't, I don't think that that's right. And so I'm proposing a compromise. Um, and this is a compromise that was kind of put forth by Jim Bingler, and it looks like Joe Paternostro was also um, leaning towards that. And I don't want to put words in either of their, their mouths, so I'll just use my own. Um, but what I would like to do is I would like to request that the supervisors that are getting health insurance go back to just straight salary. So supervisors would only be paid a salary, and then the monies that are saved from the health insurance costs go towards giving the employees a uh, cost of living raise. And if you do that, then I'm willing to vote to hang this budget. I think that would be a great compromise. Um, it's not a it's not a cost. It's something you know we show that we've got uh, you know good employees. We want to keep them um, and not give them a zero percent. So that's the compromise that I'm I'm requesting. I don't know if, what my fellow supervisors feel about that, but well, I think since that my name was mentioned in vain there, I, I'd like to speak out. Yes, I did say this year we should not give our employees an increase. They're great people, work hard. A lot of places are laying off. A lot of places are cutting back on employment. And I'm talking municipalities. Yes, Merck and a lot of big companies around are laying off and cutting back on salaries. Even the intelligencer cut their employees' uh, salary. And uh, what I'm saying, Social Security hadn't had an increase in three years. And uh, we, last year we gave our wonderful employees, what, a 3.25 uh, increase in salary. We, which we gave a 3%. It was a difficult time at that time, and we did it anyway because we had a tax increase, et cetera, et cetera. But I'm saying there's times that we have to really hunker down. I've used that before. And uh, make sure that we stay healthy, keep a fund balance for a rainy day fund, et cetera, et cetera. But I just think that our employees, we're not laying anybody off. We're keeping everybody working. We're keeping them at least at their salaries that they had last year. And I think uh, this is something we, we have to do. And uh, that's how I feel. And well, that's why I think that this is so brilliant, Tom, because we're not asking for anybody here to give up something. It's well, us here. It's you giving up your health insurance. Last so year I gave up my salary. Well, I'm, I'm suggesting that we go back to just strictly we salary. Gave up our salaries. And, uh, you know, it was something that we did to try to balance the budget. And uh, so it's not like we haven't done anything. It's we have. And, uh, well, Tom, this is doing more so that we well, can give our employees a small cost of living. Well, that's very nice. Uh, and it would be nice it if we had the ability to do that. Well, you do have the ability. You can say yes. All right. We're not going to argue about this. 
you, you made your point. If there's any further discussion on it, we'll hear it. Constructive construct, uh, discussion. If not, I'm going to call a question on the budget motion. All in yeah. favor? Aye. Is there, I don't know if that's a question or a... Yeah. I'm going to call the question, Joe, and then you can comment. Calling the question on the hanging the budget. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Three and, Three and one. Mr. Panonostro. <clears throat> I'm getting up here too much. As much as I hate agree with uh, Ms. Philo, I, I like to see you guys give up the insurance. I'm against giving the non-uniform people a pay raise. I wouldn't mind giving it to the police, the cops from New York terms, only because they're the guys carrying the gun and they're the guys protecting us. Uh, but given the 75000 or whatever it is for the insurance, I'm not against that at all. Moving on with the agenda. We need to um, examine resolutions for FEMA relief re um, contributions. We are the lead municipality for Hurricane Lean, Hurricane um, Irene funding from FEMA, and as such, we have to be off. We have to authorize ourselves to be that funding um, and lead municipality for our residents in this community. Is there a motion to approve designation for Asian so resolution <coughs> for Irene? Second. Is all in favor? Aye. Aye. Is there a motion to approve designation as Asian for Hurricane Lee? So moved. All in favor? Oh, Aye. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. <coughs> Next item, we have uh, two Eagle Scout proclamations, James Capelli, Troop Number 24, and Cole Rushworth, Troop 6. There is a motion to approve. Move for approval. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Next item on the agenda, the street hierarchy. Um, James, sir. Judy's here Judy to do a presentation. Judy is going to speak to that. Thank you. Thank you. I'm here tonight to present the street hierarchy changes proposed to the subdivision land development ordinance, the zoning ordinance, and the comprehensive plan based on the recommendation of the Planning Commission. <coughs> the Planning Commission for the last several years has been actually many years, more than several, many years, has been working to reclassify the streets to a, to a new hierarchy. They've worked over time with the Traffic Advisory Committee also. There were a series of meetings, then it went over to the traffic group for a while, then it came back to Planning Commission. There was some disagreement. I think in the end there was much more agreement than disagreement, and I think that what I'm going to present to you was the culmination of many years worth of work. Essentially, the, the crux of it is, although there's a lot of little mini amendments to make it all work, the crux is changing the street hierarchy from the current hierarchy of arterials, collectors, sub-collectors, and residential access or local streets to a new criteria of regional arterials, community arterials, community collectors, neighborhood collectors, and then local roads. It's added that extra criteria of neighborhood collectors in because we do have streets in this township that function as neighborhood collectors that channel the traffic from neighborhoods into certain roads that then go on to the other larger collectors that get then to the community <laughs> arterials and the regional arterials. We, we needed to recognize that additional level of streets. So if I take you through the memo that was written, I think you all have it in your package, in your packet. The first group are some zoning ordinance amendments, and that's just to make the language consistent. It's consistency to get the new hierarchy throughout. The subdivision land development also is substantially consistency to get the new language throughout and through the plan requirements. And then it does change some of the street and road standards. It adds the sidewalks, multi-use trails, and the pedestrian slash bike trails in, instead of always having sidewalks in for the larger roads, it adds the other options of multi-use trails and pedestrian slash bike trails. So you're not always getting a sidewalk, you're getting what's appropriate for the type of road. It also changes some of the road width requirements to make them consistent with what the changes have been proposed. Um, 
adds some definitions of the newer terms in. And then finally, there's an amendment, a draft amendment resolution to the comprehensive plan because the street hierarchy is currently in the comprehensive plan. That in a nutshell is what it is. And it's all written in a form so that if you would so desire, you could authorize your solicitor then to prepare it for advertising. Is there a motion to uh, advertise? So moved. Second. Um, just so you guys get a flavor of the hierarchy, a regional arterial would be uh, like the 611 bypass, Route 202 Parkway. Uh, community arterial would be like uh, Northeastern Road, Southeastern Road, Swamp Road, Route 313. Community collector would be something on the lines of Ferry Road, Lime Kiln, Lower State Road, Cherry Lane, it's not on there. East Road. Just giving some examples. Yeah. Spring Valley. Collector. A neighborhood collector would um, along the line of Meeting House Road, New Britain Road, Old Nude Road, Rogers so Road, so. Sourman Road. Um, and then that would be, that's the hierarchy. You, you, the, the neighborhood is the most uh, secured in the upper, or the most, tra or least traveled in the upper one is the most traveled. Okay, there's a motion and a second. All in favor of the motion to advertise. Aye. 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 Thank you. <coughs> so nice. All right. Snow removal ice control bid. We have a memo from Mr. John recommending that we award to the um, bidders that have come in, which include Hartman, Puppy Dog, Visual, and this is within the 2012 um, estimated budget at this time. And having already experienced a storm, we know the importance of having them available. Is there a motion to approve the bid? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Just for the record, puppy dog landscape is no relation to the Dawson Dog Park. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, zoning hearing board application at Tabitabi. Tabitabi. We're going to leave that to the zoning hearing board. Okay. And, and Temple Judea development and escrow agreements. Do we have them? Yes, they were prepared consistent with the land development approvals granted by the board some time ago, and they reflect the conditions of preliminary and final plan approval. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. have to vote on that? Uh, yeah, you we'll sign it. Okay, vote well for approval. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Yep. Treasurer's report. Mr. Bingner had a question. Oh, question. Uh, you come to take this stand, please. Okay. Undo. Are the until the questions done? I guess. No. Motion carried. Jeff, I believe that it was never determined whether or not you're going to take the road frontage, uh, whether or not. Uh, That's in the agreement to be reserved until we see what happens across the street. It was consistent with the preliminary plan, final plan approval. Okay. So that's not that's not been decided. Oh well, that's one of the questions. I, I didn't think that you know. No, that's not been decided. I mean, so did you in this agreement? Did you come up with a dollar figure if it's you know that, a dollar per? That issue has been incorporated into the agreement as being needed to be resolved by the payment of cash or the inclusion of the road. Okay, so you went by a, a dollar figure for uh, curbing, gutter, widening. Never, we never yeah. came to a conclusion because it's still open by this agreement. It's still open. It's still okay. open. All right, because we don't know the full ramifications of across the street yet. Right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, next item is the re approval or consideration of the treasurer's report for d November fifteenth. Move for approval. Is there a second? second? All in favor? Aye. 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 And the bills list for November 1st, 2011, and November 15th, 2011. Move for approval. For both of them? You're moving for both of them? Okay. Thank you. Second. Is second? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Next meeting of this board, do we need to, what's the agenda for December 6th? At this point, we don't have anything. I move that we cancel the November 6th board meeting scheduled. November, December. December. Excuse me, December 6th, yes. December 6th. Any objection? No. Oh, okay. Consensus of the board is that we're going to cancel the December 6, 2011 meeting of this board. We will hold. We will be holding a special meeting, but the special meeting scheduled for November 17th for um, the Her Colonial Heritage Community has been canceled. New date to follow. 
Stillston Township Municipal Building will be closed Thursday, November 24th and Friday, November 25th for the Thanksgiving holiday. Leaf and Yard Waste Recycling, December 10th at Central Park. Dolstown Res Township residents only. And please take with you the um, Dolstown Food Pantry donation list. Do your best. Get rid of your old microwaves and coffee pots and computers and whatnot. Um, any other business? Seeing none, we are adjourned. Thank you very much, everybody. Yeah.